I have a little bit of a messy desk right now because I'm in testing phase. This here is the new Lolano V12 Ultra. I just finished my review of the V12 a few weeks ago. Incredibly good results, kind of what I expected. This is the V12 Ultra. It has the same general chassis as the V12, nothing really changed there. But what this has is when you plug this into your laptop, you get access to cooling software. The software will allow you to automatically control the cooling, or you can actually set fan curves here. Normally, you know, you're doing this kind of thing. Over there, you can have it based on the temperature of your GPU and CPU. It will automatically adjust the fan curves. Super cool. Super, super, super cool. So we'll jump into this review. I don't need to do too much intro. It is a gasket style cooler. You put your laptop on it. This seals off the bottom of your laptop and forces air into the bottom of it. We know these things work. I've already done the V12 non-ultra. What I'm gonna do here that's new is I'm gonna show you the uh, new software. I'm gonna bring in as well a different laptop. I also have a much more powerful laptop for this review today, uh, just cause I want something extra, something new as well. And I'm gonna be testing a Legion 7 Pro with a 9950HX 3D and a 5080, a monster. So let's jump in. Let's show you the new features of the V12 Ultra and also let's test a big, big, big boy laptop. So here we are set up. We're on the V12 Ultra. I just recently published the V12 version of this, uh, a video about that. I'm not gonna do as much testing here. I can just actually bring that date over because the cooler is actually the same. It has the exact same cooler. It's the same chassis. So it'll give us an idea of how it works. And it works very well, spoiler, even in my relatively air conditioned area, it's still very effective. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is show you what the Ultra offers here. And the Ultra offers a full software package, which is actually pretty sweet. Um, so, I mean, this is what sells the Ultra over the standard. So you come in here to the Lolano website, they have their options here. You go to the Lolano V12 Ultra. You can see this one doesn't just as manual. The Ultra has the software. You download that uh, and then you install it. And it's this myth cool. It is myth cool. It's very cool. So in here we have our hardware information. It's able to read over our computer. Uh, and the way it does that is you plug into the USB-C. So we have our display. It actually gives like information on my display and all that. That's cool. All the yada, yada, yada. What's going on with the CPU over here? What's going on with the GPU over here? TDP, GPU is not doing anything, all this kind of good stuff. Very cool. Ooh, you can select your sensors. Oh, this is cool. What the heck? There's all kinds of sensor tweaking you can do in here. Uh, that's interesting because there could potentially be different things you want to measure. So you could bring in all kinds of different stuff in here. That's fascinating, actually. You can bring in, so just for your sensory overview, you could bring in different things there. So anyway, so we'll go to Device Manager. Uh, it detected the V12. I just clicked the button and it just downloaded some firmware. Very good. Uh, let's come in. Oops. Let's come in a little closer here. So here is a look at the software here. So we have this kind of auto mode, turning it on and off. You click that. If it, it mine came automatically, but you can click that, turn it on. It's got information about the cooler, obviously, and then you have your hardware overview here. So the CPU is running at three percent. It's not really doing anything. Just maybe some background tasks. Temperature ambient in this office right now is uh, about twenty-three degrees, just so you know. And we're sitting at about forty-six. Uh, the Lano is on. It's just not doing much right now. Fine. Frequency, all that kind of stuff. GPU, same idea. GPU is not really doing anything at all, to be honest. That's also good. And we also have the GPU temperature, frequency, all that kind of stuff here. DRAM usage, VRAM usage, etc. Over here on the right is where the controls are. So we have our RGB lighting control. I'm actually going to kick back. You can see this thing has a full RGB suite right, on the sides, on the back. Uh, and of course, you can change it. So right now it's in pink. I think I just put it to a pink type thing. Blue, can you see that? Here, let's come down. Blue, green, purple, orange, just to distract me. Anyways, so that's the lighting stuff. There are different modes here. So of course we can use you know, these here. I'm in manual mode. So we're gonna kick back out one more time. Manual mode, this is how I normally do it. We have our roller here, right? So you can certainly still use this. Kick it up, kick it down. Very good. Power lighting, all that kind of stuff, just like the standard Lolano V12, for example. Coming back in here one more time. And then we have the non-manual modes here. So that's the manual mode right there. I click this on, speed does not change when the temperature is plus minus three, just gives it a little bit of a mm, buffer, a little bit of a fuzzy zone, so it's not just immediately fan on, but you can change it. There's low mode and it's AI driven, so it will look at your temperatures here and put into what it perceives as a low temperature that's good. Right? It's not going to necessarily be you know, stuck to... Th you can see it's actually changing before I was finished talking. 
Okay, so we'll do these low, medium, and high in the, like in a game scenario. Right now, we're not doing anything, so it's just kind of hanging out. Now, the other thing here is custom. So we come in here, we go to custom, and you can actually create a custom curve. It was actually more like this before. Um, kind of like that before and it was a pretty standard linear type curve so the fans don't do much when we're at 20 degrees they're on at about 20 percent at 30 uh 40 degrees and what were we were idling at there i can't remember it was uh about 50 degrees something like that so this is kind of where we're idling just it's a fairly hot system obviously so we're just kind of idling there and so we're probably around about 30. now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this down like that because we're sitting around this temperature right so until we actually start loading up the system now as a result, it's not gonna run as fast. All right, lots of things you can play with here. Bring that down even further, say, you know what, I want you to be really, really, really kind of chilled out until the temperatures start to get higher. See that? So now we've made a custom mode where it's curved like that. So it's gonna take some time before the fans kick in. So because we're idling around, what was it, 46, 38, we're not that hot yet, the fans are just kind of, just honestly, they're just hanging out, just not doing much over here. And then once we start loading up the system here, like 60 or 70 is probably indicative of, you know, basic load, um, something going on. But you're really gonna be around here when you start to like load up a game. We're gonna get, okay, we're getting temperatures now. Then the fans are gonna kick up. It just helps prevent it from, you know, the fans going crazy when there's like nothing going on, right? And bring this down even further, right? It just, it just, it's even lower now, right? Now we're down to 400 or so. Uh, and this thing is quite pretty quiet. It might pick up louder on the microphone, but around 300 to 400, it's actually quite quiet. You can hear it, but it's pretty quiet. Um, so this is normally how I would set it, because again, I'm also not in a hot climate. I'm in a relatively cool area, and I'm in an office that's air conditioned at 23 degrees. A lot of people don't game at 23 degrees, my audience especially. A lot of you guys, you know, live in different regions, um, you know, areas in uh, the United States that are gonna be hotter, Southern Europe, um, and potentially without air conditioning is what I'm getting at. I mean, if you have air conditioning, you have air conditioning. It's not a big difference. But if you're living in an area that doesn't use a lot of air conditioning, uh, your, your ambient temperatures are so much higher that even with cooling, you could potentially be sitting in an area that's much much higher temperature. And so your ambient might actually be much higher than mine. So you may actually want, you know, this, this may actually kick up much earlier for you guys. And it's, it's fine. It's just hotter where you guys are. Okay, so the game is now ripping. So the system is starting to heat up, obviously. The fan kicked up for a moment, and now you can see it actually went back down. That's very cool. I probably shouldn't have been talking there. It went up all the way up to 1,000 because loading up the game, you start to really hit the CPU. CPU starts to heat up. And then now we're past that phase, and it was like, all right, I can chill out now a little bit. Down to 500, okay? Let's watch it go up and down now. So there'll be por portions in this game, you know, when you're loading in, where the CPU starts to get loaded up a little bit heavier, like now, right? CPU is actually being loaded up now. So now it's gonna kick it up. When you're not doing anything, it's going to cool off. It doesn't need to run as fast. Okay, now we're loading in. It kicked up even further, keep things nice and cool because obviously loading into a new area is gonna get things nice and hot, obviously. And now it's cooling back down and turning itself down a little bit, right? So it is a nice, useful, and it's way down now, right? Because it, all of that initial load in where, right, we loaded in first to the game, which hits the CPU really hard. And then we loaded in to the actual stage here, which loads up all the shaders and all that kind of stuff, really slams the CPU. Things start to get super hot. And so it has to kick up a little bit, right? So let's come through here. We'll run through a little bit here. We're at about a thousand here check the temperatures in that. So the GPU is sitting at about 138 as a peak, 130 to 138, very good. Temperature on the GPU is 74-ish. We'll just go with average, like 74, 75, no problem. That's actually pretty low. This GPU can throttle around 80 or so, and it will, depending on the scenario. CPU is only at 75 to 80. Again, very heavy CPU gain. Very, very heavy CPU gain. Look at those watts, jeez. 80 watts on that CPU, holy smokes. Now, the thing is around 800, it's gonna sound louder on microphone, it always does, it's just 
that's the way microphones work. They pick up noise like this. Uh, around 500, it's actually quieter than the laptop. 800, it's essentially on par with the laptop. The laptop is making a high pitch noise, like a noise. The Lilano cooler is actually making a nice cool sound, like a deep resonance there. Like it actually went down again. Easier to run area. Uh, making a deep resonance sound, that's like more of a rumble. And it's much less annoying than the fan. So if I can decrease the laptop fans a little bit, it's a good thing because the Lilano fans are much less annoying. It is. So. Very good. Okay, so now what I wanna do quickly, I'm actually gonna, just gonna kick out. So we saw what we got there. Uh, Right, even under this relatively limited scenario here, with it only running at 650, if you can see that there, because I, I really moderated that curve, we're still only sitting at, where are we at here? 73 and 76. 76, 75, it'll jump up and down, especially the CPU, but under 80-ish and up to 80 there or so on the CPU. So let's pause for a second here and we'll come back without the pad. Here we are back now, and remember, I'm in a fairly well temperature controlled area. It's it's 22 to 23 degrees in here. Uh, if it goes up, the air conditioning will kick in. So we're stable here. And we'll see how fast, the t like immediately the temperatures are higher, right? The GPU is up quite a bit. CPU is up a little bit. The CPU bounces a lot. But what you will also notice is the wattages will go down because the CP they, they don't want to be any hotter than that. So what happens here is they actually will start to bounce up and down. So the GPU wattage, CPU wattage will just go down essentially and it will throttle. That's what you're getting is throttling. And the GPU as well. NVIDIA GPUs, they do not want to be really above, much above 80 degrees. And so what'll happen there is you'll start to get frequency throttling in that and your performance will go down. And again, this is not a hot environment. If you're in a hot environment, it'll be much worse, right? Okay, quick cut. Uh, I have tested the V12 non-ultra with um, some slimmer laptops, like 5070, these type of laptops, which is fine. I mean, they're great. They make a, they made a big difference on that. But I decided for the V12 Ultra here, let's go all out. So this is a monster. This is a true monster. This is the AM. This is the uh, AMD version of the Lenovo Legion 7 Pro. This one here has the, as you can see here. Let's bring it up. There we go. Two different mice going on at one time. Uh, 9950X 3D. So a behemoth CPU. 16 core 32 thread monster uh, not the best in terms of thermals because it is very sensitive to thermals the 9950 9955 hx is a hot running cpu in general it's efficient but it can run hot but because it has 3d cache it doesn't want to run hot because 3d cache is very sensitive to thermals so this is a monster laptop but it is subject to potential throttling if the cpu gets too hot it'll bring those temperatures down by throttling the cpu down so I suspect that the V12 Ultra here will actually have a pretty good impact on that CPU because it's gonna help it run cooler and it's not gonna throttle. Therefore you get more performance and therefore that 3D cache is doing what it's supposed to do. So we'll test this laptop. And it's not just about the CPU, it has a very good GPU. So it has a 5080, the reason that the 5080 is interesting, 5080 or 5090, or both of them are higher water. So here we're looking at the uh, Legion 7 Pro with a 9950HX3D5080. I did have to increase the settings because it was just, it needed more. So I put it all the way up to ray tracing ultra, no frame gen, with uh, balanced scaling. So this is very demanding. Again, flat raised, I didn't even do max, but flat raised 358, 1500. And so the first thing we can see here, you look at the graph below as I'm going, because I'm going to be looking at the top here, but you can follow along on the graph there. When it's flat, the temperature is vile, it's horrible. FPS is down, 50, uh, 65 average, 51 for the lows, 41 for the 0.1% lows, uh, 51 dB, whatever. CPU temperature is 102 degrees, which these are Phoenix range CPUs. They are meant to run hot. They actually boost like crazy. It's kind of how they're designed, but that's that means that we're just hitting peak and just doing that. The problem is here, the watts are low. So we're at 66. If you actually just go one below, just, just raising up the laptop. So we'll just look at these two here, raising up the laptop. Uh, same CPU temperature, but the wattage here jumps up. So when you raise it up, you're actually getting the same temperature on the CPU, but at much higher watts, meaning it's not throttling as bad. The GPU temperature, uh, also 95 is really high for an NVIDIA GPU at 157 watts. Once we raised it up, it did get a little bit uh, cooler, five degrees cooler and a few more watts. So that's good. Now using the Lilano is where we start to see impressive results. So we can see here the average FPS goes up 66, 68, 70, 70. The 1% lows go up, 53, all the way up to 59, right, very good. So we're gonna compare it to raising it up, right? It's going 
up. There might be some typos on that. Like that might be a little weird thing, but generally speaking, it goes up kind of thing. 0.1% low, same thing, just goes up 51, all the way up to 55, 55. So 800 to 1500 is where you're getting essentially peak performance. The DB, yeah, it's a little noisy, but it is what it is. CPU temperature goes, just plummets, right? 102 and even raised up 102, it goes all the way down to 90, which means we're not throttling. There's no CPU throttling here because the Dragon Range is meant to run at about 100 watts or 100 CPU, 100 degrees or so. So there's just no throttle. And again, I'm not in the hottest climate. If you're in a hot climate, this could be very substantial. GPU watts, they go from 66 up to 75, and then they basically stay the same. So CPU watts stay the same the whole time, but you're getting better temperatures. So same wattages, better temperatures. That's good. And even in my co relatively cool office, you're getting good results here. Imagine if you live in a hot climate. That could be that could be a massive difference. GPU temperature just plummets from 95 all the way down to 72. That is a 23 degree temperature drop from peak all the way down with more watts, 57 all the way up to 170. Even raised up, we were at 90 degrees at 160, and it was probably throttling because we weren't getting full watts. Once you add the Lolano, you unlock it, you go from 160 up to 170 in all these cases here, and it just gets cooler and cooler and cooler. So again, even in my relatively cool office, you're seeing a temperature drop and wattages stable, stable, becoming stable. Frequencies went up a little bit. They were just bouncing around a lot, especially when it was flat. They were horrible when it was flat, but even here, they're just bouncing around a lot. Once you use the Lano, they just get more stable. They go up a touch, but they're more stable. That's the V12, like standard V12. This is the V12 Ultra. Uh, the primary advantage of the Ultra over the standard V12 is this AI type setup here. Uh, it's not necessarily AI, it's more like an algorithm, but um, having this in here where you have access to this front end here, you can make custom uh, curves. It's really nice being able to set up a custom curve and you can use these pre-cooked ones, low, medium, high. It's much quieter, right? So I don't have to constantly tinker with my noise levels on the Lalano saying, you know, do I need more or less? Depending on the scenario, if I get to an area where the game's really starting to hit the system a lot harder, the fans will kick up on its own a little bit more. And then if the system is, you know, not doing as much, the fans will go down, which is really nice. So that's the Lolano. I mean, honestly, it's great, right? Just kick it back here. If you have the money to afford it, I would get the Ultra because you're going to get the exact same cooling capability. There's no difference. It's the same system. But getting uh, unlocking this feature here where you access uh, these different custom modes, the custom mode alone is definitely worth it. Like being able to set custom fan curves is sick. Like it's actually really good. Uh, but of course, you can also use these, you know, these pre-baked low, medium, high, uh, or you can still use manual if you want. You can do the uh, RGB tuning from here. It's a set. Like it's, it's a, it sells it for me. It's really good. So that's the Lano. It's great. V12 Ultra in this case is quite nice. Very good.